My name is Robert Miller, and today I will be interviewing Jeffrey Siegel, a very talented ceramicist for the Beverly Hills Art Show. And I'm so happy to have you, Jeffrey, online. Thank you. I believe you're coming from San Diego. Yes, I am. Well, how about tell us where you're from, where you're currently working, and a little bit about uh, yourself and what you're doing. My name is Jeff Siegel. I'm a ceramic artist. I'm here in San Diego. I have a studio at my home where I do my work, uh, basically in uh, white porcelain and horsehair. Uh, that's my primary medium. I'm self-taught. A lot of uh, a lot of trial and error to get to where I am today. Now, Jeffrey, there's a lot of clays out there. So you just mentioned that you love and you use porcelain. There's low fire ceramics. There's high fire ceramics. In the high fire ceramics, you have stoneware, you have porcelain. You know, porcelain's this white, beautiful, smooth clay. Why did you chose choose porcelain out of all the other clays? Well, I chose porcelain primarily because it's so elegant. I like the white creaminess of the clay and the horsehair shows up very nicely against the white porcelain. You had mentioned you were self-taught, but I know you grew up in Culver City, California. So you're a local kid um, and you took a lot of classes, I believe, with um, Belly Baker. Right. And from there, you loved it so much. You actually became an instructor over at the clay house over between, it's so unfortunately they finally closed down, but Santa Monica between Yale and Harvard, I believe. Right, right. So I thought that taking a ceramics course would be nice. Within the first couple of days, um, instructor Sally Baker, who I guess you could say I had a little crush on, she brought a couple of the students over to a big vat of clay. Said, I want everybody to put their hands deep into the vat of clay. We all stuck our hands deep in the vat of clay, and I found it to be an extremely sensual experience and I just fell in, love, fell in love with the feeling of the clay. The writing was on the wall. It's where I wanted to be. Now let's uh, talk a little bit about that process. I want to get back to the clay house a little bit in a little bit which is amazing that you became an instructor being self-taught and that whole life but since you're talking about the work and you have some fantastic pieces around you now so let's talk about it. You're taking the porcelain and then you're doing your initial firing. What are you bisking to? That's that first firing. I bisked up to cone 04, which is the equivalent of about 1,945 degrees. I fire high enough to get a, a, a solid piece and to keep my white, creamy porcelain look. And then what I do is I have a, what's called a, a, a solution called terra sigillata, which is what the Greeks used to use on their old pottery. And I put that on the pieces after I've thrown them and I buff it to give it a nice shiny look. Now are so you the, brushing it or spraying it? How are you applying it, the terra I bru Yeah, the terra sigillata I brush on and then I use simply a plastic wrap that you would see from a grocery store. And as the piece spins on the wheel, I apply the, the wrapper to the pot as it's spinning and it causes it to, it causes it to shine up. And that's how I get the shine from what looks like a glaze on the piece, but it's actually not a glaze. It's just a very fine solution of ball clay and water and a little uh, other chemical to keep the, the ball clay in solution. So after you burnished it, right, that shine's called the burnishing. So now to get the horsehair effect, you're putting it back into a kiln. Are you using gas or electric for your I use an electric. I use an electric kiln. So I take my piece that has terra sigillata on it and I put it into the kiln for a bisque firing up to 04, 1945 degrees. Then the next process is to put it back in the kiln, heat it up to 900 degrees, and I put the pieces back in the kiln, and when it's up to 900 degrees, I take the piece out, I apply the horse hair to it. Oh, so this is a horse tail, and uh, I take individual strands of the horse hair. I lay the horse hair on, I work fairly quickly because I don't want the heat to go to leave the piece. I put the horsehair on, I take it, and I put it back into the kiln and let it cool down very slowly. If we could pause just for a second, what is terra sigillata? A lot of the Native American pottery use terra sigillata. It's the fine slip, not the heavier parts that have texture, sand, grog. And then if 
correct me if you're doing something different, then Jeffrey's brushing it on and using that as a polish. It actually is the best part of a slab. Correct. So just in a nutshell, terra sigillata, which is ball clay, powdered clay, and a couple of tablespoons of a special chemical called sodium silicate. I'll mix it all together. I'll siphon off the fine part into a separate bucket. And that's what I call my terra sigillata. I see also with some of the lids, I could see behind you on your forms, you have a nice sculptural element to your work. So you're combining both the throne, the sculpture and the decorative. Um, will you talk about some of your influence, how you come up with the sculptures you use on your pieces and a little bit right. about that? So for example, This piece here, I don't always know what I'm going to do until I do it. And so I sculpted the piece, I attached it to the lid, and then I sculpt the edges. Um, the, ins the inspiration for the uh, sculpture itself, uh, this is called Icarus Rising. I had this idea from uh, uh, some artwork that I had seen to do something um, in that fashion, although it was much larger. And uh, I took a block of porcelain and just started sculpting into it. Were there any people that have influenced your work? Um, what influences really helped you become the artist you are now? I'm a real nature buff and out of doorsman. And when I go into nature, I just get inspired to do things back in the studio. And as far as people go, uh, I'm a huge fan of Michelangelo. And, uh, Traveling through uh, Europe in my youth, I, one of the first places I went to was Rome, and I carried a book of Michelangelo's, uh, a picture book of his throughout Europe, and always looked at it. Besides the ceramic work, you also have another life. You're in finance. How do you balance, you know, doing the finance with being an artist? Um, is it a nice balance? Do you find it challenging, you know? Where, where, how do you get that balance in right. life? My creativity from my artwork has helped out in my day job. And yet my day job has helped out on my lot from the, from the logic side of my brain. Uh, in marketing, it's helped out just in a general business sense and running uh, an art business and in my people skills. Um, how long have you been developing your body of work? And how long have you been working in clay? Well, I started with clay back in high school. And two and a half years ago, I set up a, a home studio for myself. I took over one of the bedrooms after all the kids moved out and uh, I created a full ceramic studio. Now you've been doing this for about two and a half years pretty seriously. And right. recently you were just accepted into the Beverly Hills Art Show where right. that was, was that your first big show or have you been doing a lot of shows? Maybe talk a little bit about the experience of showing your work. I decided to do the Beverly Hills show because I thought that uh, it would be a good local area to have my type of work. I also have my work in galleries around San Diego, uh, exclusive collections in Solana Beach, uh, the Art Institute of Anza Borrego. Uh, I had uh, an interior designer come in and swoop in and purchase 10 of my pieces and said, this is what I've been looking for for two years. For the body of work now, I see sort of it growing and changing about how many pieces a year do you make oh i'd say about a hundred now i noticed in artwork that i've seen of yours in the past you incorporate a lot of texture a few other sort of styles and interests you want to talk about kind of how you stumbled into that what other things you do what makes you excited about sure types of clay Sure. Sure. So um, part of my sculptural component of my clay work is I'm always looking for different ways to different things to use in my sculpture. And um, I'm also a, uh, a garden designer. And one of the things that I had in the garden was flagstone. And what I'm doing is I'm going to be making sculptural pieces using this flagstone. And I chisel them down till they're very thin, very fine, so that they can work. Uh, as a, a sculptural piece on top of my 
uh, forms. Now, the type of kill you're using, some of the audience, you know, who are especially ceramic buffs, are you using gas kills, electric? Are you using computerized kills to help you out or all manual? What, what do you, what's your choice of kill? I use a scut kiln that has a digital computer attached to it. It's very easy to program. You showed, I believe, several different styles of work at the Beverly Hills Art Show. What was your impression of participating in that, especially as your first big show? I loved the show. I loved all the people that came through. There was a lot of, there was a lot of traffic. Uh, a lot of people came through my booth. Um, I looked at it as an opportunity to market my work. Uh, the Beverly Hills Art Show was fantastic in organizing, and they have a wonderful venue for, show, for the artists to show all of their work. I met lots of wonderful artists. Well, Jeffrey, I really appreciate your time today. It was a pleasure getting it to be able to talk to you and hope to see you at the next, as soon as this is all over, at the next Beverly Hills Art Show. Thank you, Robert. I'm looking forward to it.